That is my phone screen sharing to that. And I can literally talk about what I'm gonna order for Jimmy John's, from Jimmy John's for lunch on a Sunday morning and show it, okay? Now we, we have our church app over here, ECTV, which is in development still. But if I'm talking about a verse, I can pull the verse up and I can screencast that right away. And I have the, the ability to talk about Adam and Eve and read the verse itself. The other cool feature as well, I'm gonna stop the screencast here for a second and I'm gonna go to camera. I am using my phone as a camera into my switcher right now. So we're gonna do a little phone inception here. So this Sunday we had water baptisms. And again, this is a new technology, so there's still kinks to work out, but we use my phone as the roaming cam for water baptisms, and it makes it super easy. I've used my phone, and I'm, I'm gonna jump over here just a little bit, but over here, and you can see, we use Skype for connect calling. This is the talk show from Viz RT now, but I've literally set my iPad up right here, flip the camera around like this, and been on the phone as the producer, sitting here talking to them with my headset, with SA on, and I'm able to communicate to the talent right then and there. These, these are some things that are just, it revolutionizes the way that you can use technology in church. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Worship Tech Tour here in Puyallup, Washington. <laughs> Don't know if I said that town right, but uh, I'm glad to be here. And this is the ultimate video and audio over IP system specifically for a church. I'm really impressed with the solutions that Dariel and his team have implemented here at Experience, and you are going to learn a ton in this episode. Often with these tech tour videos, they are longer, so we'll put the chapter markers below so you can scrub to the areas of the video that you want to learn more about, but don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hey guys, my name is Gerald Cummins. I'm the media director here at experiencechurch.tv in Puyallup, Washington, and uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Jake for just coming out here and making time to see see what we've done. So uh, we have two consoles. Uh, we have Alan and Heath Evanis. We have one for front of house, one for broadcast. Uh, and we have the deep pack on them. Uh, IO cards, we're using Giga Ace and uh, Dante. And so we rely on a lot of Dante for connecting computers and devices like that uh, together. And then uh, all the stage boxes are connected via the S-Link port. And then we're also using Giga Ace to connect the two consoles together. And then um, the, the important thing when you're working with multiple consoles is your clock, making sure that they're on the same time. And so what we do is, because we have multiple Dante devices, intercom, computers, I mean, all kinds of stuff, what we do is we just set the clock for the consoles to be on Dante. And that way everything's smooth and we don't have any problems. So uh, we're using quite a bit of channel count uh, because we have our auditorium and then we also have our studio upstairs that we use as well for mics and computers and all that stuff so yeah really happy with it as soon as we brought it in here we were just like wow the sonic quality compared to what we had previous which was the midas m32 uh it just blew it out of the water we we've got um alan heath we use a lot of mac minis for multi-tracking and things like that and then you can see here this is rts intercom uh, with a clearcom headset don't sue me but yeah uh, just just try to keep as many people connected as possible with Intercom. Uh, we found that to be one of the greatest assets uh, with our productions, having good Intercom so we can hear each other and communicate. And then a little hidden feature is this is actually a sit-stand desk. And so uh, if you're in here mixing on Sunday, you can you know have it up where you're mixing at a good level, or you're able to, during the week when you're mixing on stuff, just bring it down and sit and uh, just be comfortable. So. You know, if I'm in here on a Monday, Tuesday, whatever, I'm able to uh, just mix, you know, comfortably. And uh, we do a lot of tie lighting to connect stuff. And so right now I'm actually playing a song from upstairs and I can just show you. Um, I've got my studio DCA here. This is my broadcast. Oh, Toto, look at that. But uh, what we do is we do a live show uh, in the morning and so, or before every service. And so we will take the master mix from upstairs, pipe it down here. That way the front of house guy doesn't have to do a bunch of extra mixing. He can just focus on, I've got one channel, that's my master out from upstairs, and then they can just go straight into worship. So try to keep it simple and as easy as possible. This is just our Mac, which is typically Spotify and Logic for multi-track recording. With Dante, we're using Dante for the multi-track, and then we just have a cheap focus right for just uh, XLR into the console. So that's the only computer that's XLR out. And we're actually playing music right now. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of what we have at front of house. And then of course, good old fashioned 58 talkback mic uh, for, for the band and stuff. 
and then decibel meter, which I think is one of the most important tools for front of house, making sure that you're not bumping it loud uh, beyond hearing damage. I like keeping it at about 90 dB. Um, and I found that if it feels rich and thick, you don't have to push it really hard. And so 90 dB is kind of the limit I like to keep it at. And uh, it's a good container, or the, the room is a good uh, container for, for our sound system. We have a line array system. Uh, this is, okay, long story short, it used to be Macaulay Audio. They were out uh, of the Sumner area uh, in Washington State. And now it's actually RMS Acoustics. Um, and so what we did is we actually installed these boxes back in 2006. And then uh, in 2021, I believe we pulled them down, refreshed all the components and brought new life to it. And it went from kind of a, a harsh, cold sound from just wear and tear to the best way I can describe it was like a velvet, just nice, warm and soft. Um, and then we also upgraded our subs. So we have four dual 18 cabinets. Uh, they're facing each other. Uh, and then we also have something to kind of help with the building uh, because we do have a balcony. We have three single 18s right above us. And so that's just to help fill the balcony in. We wanted to fly subs, but the building structure is wood framing, wood trusses, and between getting an engineer, safety problems, things like that, we just said, no, we'll keep them on the ground because we value lives more than we value sound. So, so uh, we, we did that. Uh, Stage-wise, you can see our drums, there's no shield or anything, it's all electric. And that was something that we did years ago to help, bleed, uh, help stop the stage noise. Um, and then one of the things that we've also done as well uh, is we have house instruments. So just like there's a house drum kit, uh, we have a house bass, a house guitar, and a house keyboard. So um, we have a Nord Stage 3, uh, I believe a Variax with a, a Line 6 board, and then I forget the, the bass, but uh, that's a Zoom pedal, pedal board, excuse me. And so what that does is that helps keep the sound consistent because what happens is most guitar players, they like to come in with their own board, their own guitar, no offense, but um, they like coming in. And then if you're a sound engineer, you're having to change all the settings, right? Gain, maybe you got some preamp action going on, EQ, compression, all that stuff. And so what we did is we said, no, we're gonna keep the same house equipment to help the sound be consistent each and every week. So uh, what these are, are uh, basically a haptic feedback uh, base, if I can put it like that. There's a subwoofer that's actually mounted to this. So when the bass player's playing, uh, he's getting a feedback response, like it, if it was an actual cabinet playing. We have no cabinets, no amps, no, no anything like that. So they just go straight into the boards and come out. So we wanted to give them something that felt organic, like they were actually playing. So if you play bass on this, it feels like you're actually playing a bass. And so that was just something we did. We just have a cheap little, like an Amazon amp. And then we just take a, a, a mix out from our st uh, stage box, run it in here and it converts it. And there we go. So I think it costs us maybe two, 300 bucks at most. So drum kit, this is a Roland drum kit. Uh, this actually used to be our pastor's old kit. And so what we did is we brought it in. Uh, we took off all of the drum heads and we retrofitted it. We wrapped it with, uh, this is just, just a, a drum wrap. Um, so it makes it stand out a lot better. And then these are all USB. So you're able to get, and I'll explain this in a second, but you're able to get actual detailed uh, drum hits. So if you're doing rim shot, um, you're hitting different parts of the snare, it gives you that same sound as if it was a live kit. And so uh, they're all USB triggers. Um, we're actually needing to come through and actually tech this. Uh, it does need maintenance. It's not just install once and, and you're good to go. Uh, but the other thing that we did as well is we added a butt kicker. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but a butt kicker, basically this seat, if you feel it, it's actually vibrating. So when you hit the snare or uh, the kick or the toms, it resonates. So if you crank it to 11, you'll have to go to a chiropractor afterwards because it just bam, sh shoots you up. Um, so our drummer loves it. He grew up as a, as a metal guy. So you can imagine kind of his preference of style. For our in-ear monitor system, uh, we just have been working on this a bit. So I apologize for the poor <laughs> labeling, but hey, that's just reality. Sometimes you just use some green tape. Um, but we use Aviom for all of our in-ear mixing. And we really like that because it sounds good, if I can put it like that. Um, you're able to get reverb control. You're able to get stereo control. Um, we're able to do up to 16 stereo channels. Um, we've actually had this since like 2014 and we just haven't upgraded, but uh, the main advantage of the Aviom in-ears is really for singers. 
because if a singer is using a wireless belt pack, um, and I, actually we can go over here and I can show you. Okay, so uh, back here we have our AVM in here for our singers. And if you can tell, there's only one cable. There's no headphone out, anything like that. And that's because, yeah, and it tracks down. Um, but that's because we have with the AVM head unit, we're able to uh, select the channels and then have an actual XLR out from the back of the device go into each in your monitor uh, unit. So we use Sennheiser, so it goes in the back of those. That way they're able to mix it. They don't need a, a, a front of house, uh, excuse me, not a front of house, but a monitor engineer. They're just able to mix it themselves here and uh, then just go up front and, and go from there. So it makes it really easy to work with with singers. And we're in the process of getting, if I could say like an 80% mix down. So that way the singers come in, recall it. They can make their fine little tweaks. Uh, you know, I want more of this. I want less of this. Uh, and then they're good to go. And so uh, it makes it really easy so we don't have to tie up a bunch of uh, aux outs or something like that on the board for in-ear monitor mixes. One of the things that you could tell just by the look of the room, it looks like salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of acoustic treatment. Uh, and that's because we wanna help control the sound. Where I'm at right now is actually, believe it or not, the worst spot of the room. Um, and so we're in the process of uh, going to be installing acoustic treatment above us to help with feedback and things like that. Um, but we were big on trying to help make sure that the room is controlled because speech intelligibility, I mean, just sound in general, we want it to sound clear. We don't want it to sound lost, you know, because of reverberation. So we have for cameras up on the stage, we use, uh, these are the Panasonic uh, BGH1. It's a micro four thirds. It's kind of like the black magic, the little, little cutaway cameras that they sell. Um, it's using a Rokinon 14 mil lens, but it's a great camera, uh, really good color. Uh, it works very well with the LED wall. Previously, we had black magic cameras and they just did not handle well with our LED wall. And so as soon as we put these Panasonics in, they worked great. Uh, we have just SDI out, gen lock in, so everything's synced. And then it's great because they're also PoE. So they're connected all the way to our control room switch. And so we can power them. We don't have to have any type of breakout. And we, we move this around a lot. So that's why it's not taped down. This We do a lot of shuffling around, but uh, you're able to log in to the menu from the computer. You just have to have the IP address and you can color correct it from your control room. You don't have to be down here with a monitor trying to fidget with settings and look at another screen. It just makes it really easy. Over here, we have playback. This is what we use for playback. It's the I, I connect. Uh, yeah, I connect. There we go. I connect and we're just doing breakout. It's great because we were talking earlier, but multi tracks have really saved the small to medium sized church with band members. Because what happens when somebody calls out? Well, uh, what you're able to do is just load that multi track in. And so uh, we just use that. We've got six, uh, six outs, I believe. And then microphone wise, and we'll go back there and we'll see that. But we, I really like SC electronics. Uh, so we use the V7. The big thing that I love about it is that it is very narrow pickup pattern. So stage noise is very cut back. And so an actual example of that, we had a special singer in, they were singing and they were just having a hard time hearing themselves. And I was like, hold on, let me, let me swap the capsule. Let me just try something. And I gave them the V7 capsule and immediately they're like, what did you do to my microphone? It sounds so much clearer, I can hear way better. And it was just because it cut out all of the ambient noise around it. So for live performance, having a good pickup pattern is very important. Nord stage three, uh, to be honest, I'm not a musician. My brother, he's a musician. He loves it. Sounds great. Um, and so we're just basic output going in. That's kind of all that we have for up here on the stage besides, you know, just some lights that are, these are just Amazon lights, LED lights uh, that are all DMX. So this is a Chevet F2. So it's a 2.9 millimeter pixel pitch. And this is, I believe, 16 feet by nine feet. And it's mounted to our I-beam up there. This was a big upgrade from what we had previously. Originally, when we designed our stage, uh, we had uh, nine TV walls, three by three. It looked really good, but it was still a TV wall. You had the big black bezels and the borders and stuff. And so as soon as we put this in, it just enthralled the room. A lot more people were able to connect with our events that were going on because we use this as a asset in the service. It's not just this fancy big piece of technology. We believe that every piece of technology is a tool. As soon as we put it in, it just really helps people's connection a lot better. So 2.9, it's great because uh, it's a single panel. Say there's a problem with one of the sub panels, you just pop the sub panel out, replace it, and you're good to go. Send it in for repairs. So we've had to do that 
And one of the things that have really bit us in the butt with this wall is the powering down process. We would leave the wall on nonstop. And we found that because of it being on constantly and the heat that it generates, because this does draw a lot of power and heat, uh, components were going out very quick. So as soon as we started literally unplugging it from the, the outlet, it has drastically saved the lifespan. 2.9, uh, it looks really good on camera. That's another big thing with LED walls. You want something that looks good with camera. When it comes to picking an LED wall, your pixel pitch and your distance from your, your wall to your subject makes a huge difference because if they're really back against it, then you're gonna see all the pixels on the wall. But if you're further and you know we're about 10 feet or so right here, uh, the background just blends in and it just looks amazing. And so uh, distance from your camera to your subject, as well as your subject to your wall, as well as your camera to your wall, that type of blending of, of ingredients is very important. So if you're looking at an LED wall, definitely play around with your cameras, play around with the shutter, play around with the aperture, play around with the, um, the position of the cameras, because you might just move your camera two feet and then all of a sudden your video wall pops. So camera placement, subject placement is very important with an LED wall. And then we have uh, iMag up above us. This is just uh, a digital projections projector, uh, laser projection, and we just use it for image magnification. So below we use strictly for graphic elements, sermon elements, worship elements. Above is always camera feed. So that way people can see what's happening just like if they were online. Stage skins, uh, as soon as we put them in and hit them with some light, it just sold it, boom. And then you can see behind as well, we have acoustic treatment right here to help with the sound that goes back, right? And then comes back. So acoustic treatment behind your stage is also very, really important too. We have acoustic treatment even on the doors as well because we do not want to have any type of reverberations happening in the back, especially you know when the microphone's aimed this way. So when it comes to lighting, uh, our approach is we light for camera. We do not light for uh, how it looks in the room. And that sounds a little contradictory, but when you look at a camera, a camera sensor is not as sensitive to light or color or detail as our, our eyes are. And so if you have people that are watching online, you're using your sermon, uh, you're chopping that up and you're using that for highlight bits or, or whatever, any content that's made in here, you're publicizing it. Lighting for that is so important. And so just like you would light for a studio, we treat the auditorium kind of like a studio. And so what we do for lighting is we have daylight balance. These are Lico's from China that we have a connection with. Uh, they're 35 degree lenses. And so that's our front light and side fills. And then behind us, we have 3200 uh, tungsten balance. And that just gives us that warm glow look. Um, and we found that just kind of having that warm glow look adds to the warmth of what's going on. Daylight's really good for skin balance, but that warm look just gives it that welcoming presence. During the service, the lighting will not change at all unless we're doing a video. So stage lights stay the same all the time. And if you notice, there's also no moving lights whatsoever. And that's because uh, moving lights uh, don't really help set the ambience, like a, a warm welcoming. It's, it feels more like a concert to us. If your church uses it, that's, that's up to you guys, that's fine. But for us, we did not like how it felt. You know, you're worshiping and all of a sudden, boom, you just get strobed with a bright light. So all of our lighting, that's color. So our house lights are uh, bicolor, as well as just our, our kind of LED stage light, mood light. It's all to set a tone. It's never to just, you know, flash or, or, or flare. And that's just our, our approach to it. We don't do any haze at all. During the summer months when it's fire season, we get smoke, and so we get natural haze, which is kinda <laughs> kind of cool. All right, so we're here in the green room, no green on the walls, uh, but this is, this is where the worship team hangs out or anybody that goes up on stage, they'll come through here. Uh, we have a floor director that kind of lives in here, and so their job is to make sure that whoever's going up on stage, there's no lint, there's no hair out of place, no you know zippers down or anything like that. So this is kind of a, a staging room as well. But um, the goal of this room was to just create it open, and so this chair is actually here for an event we have coming up this weekend. Um, but anyway, so moving on to the technology side, um, over here, this is like every other church, they've got the, the toolbox. And so we just got this. So in here, we've got microphones and stuff like that. We use DPA for our speaking headsets. Um, really like DPA, they sound great. This one's probably 10, 15 years old. And then this one's brand new. So, uh, and this one still sounds amazing. We just wanted something that fit the room a little better. These are Sennheiser 100 series. These are the G3s. And if you notice something about them, they're charging, recharging. I didn't really know anything about this until I talked to somebody, but Sennheiser sells a recharging 
kit, if I can put it like that, for any type of belt pack unit, whether that's a transmitter or a receiver and microphones as well. And so these are, these are G4s, but literally all they gotta do is take them, plug them in and great, good to go. A little bit of challenge though, these are older G3s, like we've had these for a long time and they don't charge. So we have to send them in for repairs coming up. This has helped cut down on battery costs as well, because we're spending, I think about 2000 a year on batteries. And so if we can help cut that cost down, that, that helps the church out. Just little KRK monitors for uh, when the singers are in here, they're wanting to listen to the song they're singing or things like that, just for playback. Capsules, these are the 865s from Sennheiser. And then these are the V7s from SE. And then this is our mixing tablet. So Pastor, he's a he was a, a big sound guy. We have a Windows Surface that has the Avantis Director software on it. And then he'll mix, uh, and by mixing, I'm talking about he makes fine tune adjustments. The sound guy is mixing, but Pastor has a specific thing that he likes. So he'll go through and just make those fine tune adjustments or say something happened, the sound guy's not there. Somebody on the front row that knows the, the software, they can mute the mic or whatever. So uh, we, we use that, I'm gonna plug this back in. Always make sure stuff's on the charger because nothing's worse than Sunday morning coming in and something's dead. Program monitor and then our amp rack. And so I'll just work top down. Uh, so this is our video wall processor. This is a Cheve uh, Novastar um, and we just have an SDI feed going into it. We're rocking 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. And then it's got three network cables that go out to the wall. Below here, this is our in-ear monitor wireless system, all Sennheiser. This is our microphone system. And you notice we also have the antenna combiners as well. That helps with wireless. Where we're at up in the Northwest, it's very technology heavy. And so T-Mobile's up here and T-Mobile bought a lot of the 600 megahertz range. There's a lot of RF going on. So RF frequencies up here are a little interesting to work with at times, but having the antenna system helps keep things stable. One of the other things that we do is if we don't have a microphone that's going to be used like our guest belt pack, we'll shut it off because we don't wanna risk the potential squeal that comes from RF. And so here, two speaking mics, uh, we have two uh, belt pack mics, which are actually gonna be replaced in the next couple of weeks with 300 series. And then these are all 100 series uh, for singing mics. Below that, this is our uh, Aviom in-ear system. And this is all connected via Dante. All I have to do is do a little bit of patching and Dante controller, flip some dip switches in the back and I have lossless audio into their in-ears. For the singers that we we're talking about, how they have their, their control, this is the AN16 unit. And what it does is if you go in the back, you can see, but there's a, basically a big uh, fan out that fans out to XLRs that you plug into the top of here. And so that way you're able to have wireless in your monitoring without needing to tie down your um, Avion unit. Allen Heath stage box. This is the 4816. Love Allen Heath, great product. And then what we did is we put everything on this power uh, switch right here. So that way when, cause we work with a lot of volunteers, all they gotta do is flip this on in the morning and flip it off when they're done. Makes it really easy so they don't have this massive shutdown process. Now amplifiers, this is where we get into more of the digital side. These are Linea amplifiers that are out of the UK. And uh, we worked with RMS Acoustics to, to put these in, but these are Dante in. So we have lossless Dante in as well as analog backup. So anytime you're doing anything digital network, you wanna have a backup because networking can go down. It's just the reality of, of that. So these uh, take care of our four subs on the stage as well as our line arrays. Below here, this is an RMS acoustic amp that they actually make in house. That's Dante and really impressive technology there. But uh, we use this to power our three subs that are in the ceiling. And then this is just a little QSC amp for some front fill speakers that we have because of our, our approach. So this is a green room. Uh, and of course, acoustic treatment, because who wants to be in an echo room when you're trying to have a conversation? Everything that we do here, we try to keep it as practical as possible and just try to you know, help with, with the finances side, right? Because a lot of times what happens is we get into the buying mindset of, well, if I just have that capsule, it's gonna sound better. But you know, for us, we say, okay, do we really need that? And so, uh, you know, we're happy with our V7 capsules. I would love to go with the new Lewitt one, but you know, if they're used once a week, I can't really justify that right now. So anyway, that's a bit of tour of the green room. Oh, and then of course the Casio keyboard, sorry. Can't forget the Casio keyboard. And so this is what they do for sound check and rehearsal and stuff like that. Okay, so these are our main man cameras. Uh, what we have is we have four of these. These are the Panasonic uh, 
AK HC 3900s. We chose broadcast cameras instead of cinema cameras or large sensor cameras for a couple reasons. Number one, I grew up doing camera. And so for me, I love having lens control. I love having intercom through lens control. It's a lot better now, but I hate getting up and trying to focus and zoom this way. And so having it to where you have actual lens control helps. This is our roaming camera, so you won't see it really with lens control right now, but little things like that, lens control, ease of operations, uh, tally, is very important because then the subject on stage knows who is talking. And so uh, this just has our tally light up here. Um, and then intercom and power. And this was really the big thing. So for us, intercom is one of the biggest tools that we use here. It's the most unseen, but it's the biggest tool because that's how we communicate. And having intercom through the camera instead of a belt pack or something like that really helps communication because when you're on a belt pack, say it's on your belt or it's on the tripod, if you're running camera and you have to take your hands off it to press the belt pack, what you're doing is you're breaking your concentration and your focus. And say you have a really fast moving subject. Well, if you're the director and someone's not paying attention because they're trying to talk, well, then you can have some complications. So for me, communication and ease of use was priority. So went with this. And then on the back is the transmission system. And this uses Simpty Fiber. And so uh, through Simpty Fiber, you're getting power, you're getting uh, uh, video bi-directional, you're getting audio bi-directional, you're getting intercom bi-directional. And so even if I wanted to, I've got this little trunk here. So I could plug in another camera and up at my base station upstairs, I just take the SDI out and I could have two cameras running through this. So it makes it really nice. Um, and then of course you have good lenses as well that are part of focal. So you zoom in, focus, and then zoom out. So camera wise, we went broadcast just for ease of use and uh, for people that are running it. One of the biggest challenges that we had outside of intercom was cameras kept getting left on. If you know anything about leaving technology on all week, you do it enough times it will wear down, break down. Upstairs, all we gotta do is flip the switch on the base station and then flip it off when we're done. It's the little things like that that help make the production life easier. We had Ursas before, good cameras, but they just weren't the right fit for us. And one of the things that we were having problems with is for the connection, the SDIs kept getting worn out for mobile. And so we kept having to re-terminate cable and re-terminate cable and re-terminate cable. So for us, everything, one package, we're happy. Okay, so this is camera one. Uh, so like I said, four cameras. So camera one is more head on. Uh, when you're doing your head on camera, we find that if you're directly head on, you lose depth. And so if you're off axis just a little bit, you get the depth back in the face and things like that. So this is off axis just a little bit. We lock the cameras up during the week for safety reasons, but on Sunday they're unlocked because that puts additional strain and wear on the tripods. So again, same cameras, basically the same lenses, but these use Canon lens controls. So you're able to properly zoom and focus all at a fingertip. So you don't have to get up, adjust anything, makes it really easy. Um, you can also just access intercom right here through the pistol grip. So again, being a camera operator, working with DSLRs when that was the huge thing and stuff, it was a pain in the butt. Having proper controls is important. The other thing is good tripod, good tripod. So these are Cartoni. I love Cartoni, love them. Uh, we've had these for gosh, 15 years and they're still great. I actually thought one was stripped because volunteers, you know, sometimes they don't unlock the tripod, but come to find out you can actually just retighten all the knobs and levers. And so that made it to be like, oh, I don't have to send this in for repairs. So good sticks are very important. Good, good camera is important as well. And then of course, headset, you wanna make sure your camera operators have a good headset. These are buyer dynamic. And I really like these ones because if you see right here, you can actually disconnect this and put on a different cable connector. So a different XLR. So most broadcast cameras, you use five pin XLR. Say you're using a belt pack and four pin. You just buy a $70 cable versus having to buy another $199 headset. We did that already. We, we made some adjustments to our camera for intercom and it just made it more feasible. And these are really cozy and comfortable as well. So uh, that's that's our, our two man cameras. And then camera two is off to the side just to give it a different angle. Um, and then we have jib over here. So this is our camera four. this is our jib. Uh, we have a wide angle lens on it. And so uh, this is the only lens that's not Canon, it's Fujinon, sorry Canon. Um, but uh, it allows us to get really good wide shots of the auditorium. I'm gonna adjust the controls, but 
I'm zoomed out full wide and you can just see how much I'm able to get just from this location. Mm -hmm. And then if I want to zoom in, I can zoom in, Whoa. you know, quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like broadcast because it's designed for live events. Cinema's on its way. It's doing a really good job of making advancements. But when we did the upgrades, there was some stuff that wasn't there yet. This is a Johnny Jib, uh, Jib, Johnny, J-O-N-Y, Jib. Uh, and then we just have a SWIT monitor and little power strip for controls. But one of the biggest things that we've been implementing for all positions uh, is checklist. So this is the camera operator checklist. And what we've found is that when we're doing this, this helps us cut down on problems. And then intercom as well. This is a digital belt pack from RTS. So this runs off PoE and Dante. And so I'm able to assign four different channels if I need to. So right now I have cameras so I can talk on cameras. And then I also have the floor director, uh, just in case they need to talk to the floor director. Um, but that way they're able to communicate and it is lossless. So there's no static, there's no hiss, there's no nothing. It sounds clean. That's the best way I can put it. it sounds clean. So camera four, we use this. This is the money shot. It just makes everything look bigger and better. So we are up here in broadcast audio control room. Um, this was kind of a passion project of mine. When we decided to do all the upgrades back in 2022, uh, we figured out we're going to use this room. And one of the things that I always struggled with was low frequency control. So I'm gonna say 200 hertz and below. I, I, I might be wrong with the, the range, but basically your, your low end. Think of your room as your container, okay? And if you have sound energy in here, what it's doing is it's splashing around. It's going back and forth, back and forth. And that's where acoustic treatment comes into place. But what happens is if you push the volume more, the waves get stronger and harder. If you have a lot of thin panels, so just say two inch, and you're trying to build a control room, not, not like an auditorium where you want some sound characteristics, but you're trying to build a dead room, you want thick absorption panels. And so like this back here, this is all GIK acoustic. We really like GIK. This is an eight inch panel, and this has what's called a scatter plate on it. I'll, I'll go over just the acoustic first. So what we did is we hit first reflections first. And so what that is, is that is the above us, and to the sides of us. So that way when the sound comes out and it's shooting this way, it's not going to hit and then come back and confuse what we're listening to. Then what we did is we hit uh, our corners the best that we can. This room was kind of converted from a hallway room to a, a, a room. And so these are just eight inch big absorbers just to control the low end energy. And you can see we have it around the best we can. This used to be an exterior wall and then we built this side of the building. So that's why we have like this power line right here. And then we also have uh, plumbing for sprinkler and stuff. So we did our best to get as much low end control in. And then behind us here, just to absorb sound, we put a scatter plate in and back here scatter plates. So that way when it hits, um, it's not deadening the room, but it's controlling that low end, but it's re-energizing it with more of the higher frequencies. So it doesn't sound flat. And when you walked in here, it didn't sound like it was like an ISO chamber. Most control rooms that I've been in, it's like an ISO chamber. It just, it hurts your ears. This, it's loud, they're alive but it's not like hurting on the ears. Yeah. Part of our mindset with production equipment is spend it where you need to, but also steward what you can. And so um, there's a guy on my team, he's a carpenter. And so I had him build this custom desk for us. So it's fit perfectly for the Avantis and down the road we upgrade to whatever console, we can just replace this and push the desk out or in or whatever. Avantis for broadcast, we have a lot more going on in broadcast. So um, there's a lot more processing and things going on, groups and things like that. Uh, Multi-track off to the left, we use Logic. Um, and then this is just plain Jane Windows PC that plays iTunes and Spotify. On the left side here, this is an interesting piece of equipment. This is a Marantz processor and if, you're wondering why do we have a processor in here? If you look at the speakers, you'll see we have a left, a center, and a right, as well as a sub. Now, what's happening is we're taking the left and right out of the console, we're going in here, and we are sending it to basically Atmos, Dolby Atmos, and we're creating a three to one mixing solution. So we have left, center, right, that's being uh, fed by left and right. So we're getting better center control, mono control, as well as a sub. And so when we first did the room, uh, you know, we got it sounded fun and man, that bass is punchy and it just smacked. And then I did room acoustics, uh, measured the room and I was like, oh my gosh, we are blowing out the low end. Like it, it looks like a slip and slide. And so we, we came in, we took out a lot of 200 Hertz. We toned the sub back down a lot. 
Uh, I mess with it doing two speakers, uh, three speakers, however what. And I found that the placement of the speakers, doing three speakers, as well as having the sub, I got the best frequency response out of the room. And so when you listen, it sounds flat, it sounds controlled, and so it, it helps with that. We're doing processing here. All of our pieces of major equipment are running on some sort of power control. Again, nothing's worse than having dirty power and having power spikes. I don't know about you, but whenever we lose power, it's always on like a Saturday night or when I'm out of town. So we do our best to help isolate that. And then of course, intercom as well, because we believe that everybody needs to be connected. Um, and you can actually see that has not been peeled off yet. And that's been there a year. So, nice. so yeah, little, little church front special. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so otherwise this room's really tuned well. Again, the biggest thing was we're controlling the low frequency, because if you control the low frequency, the rest is pretty easy to work with. So yeah, this is our broadcast audio and we're really happy with it. All right, so we're here, I call this the producer station or my office. This is where I monitor everything on Sundays. The broadcast audio room we were in, that was our original video control room. And then this used to be our broadcast audio room. So really tiny. And I'll say this, speakers matter for your control room. We had a uh, three-way active speaker. We use Cali Audio for all of our speakers. And we found that it was just so hard to mix in here. We treated the room unbelievable. There was way more acoustic treatment in here, but we found that it just didn't sound good. And as soon as we brought in a smaller speaker, the room just came to life. If you have a small room, get a smaller speaker. It helps, it really does. So these are the LP6, the one in audio, those are the IN8s, but these are the LP6, so it's a six inch with a uh, your, your tweeter. But in here, this is where I monitor the stream. I monitor the production, transitions, things like that, videos. Um, I've got my multi-view here. This is where I sit. Again, I have my intercom here. I have access to all of our intercom channels. So cameras, floor director, production audio, control room, computer graphics, producer essay, stage announce. That's where I can talk to our studio talent. And I can explain more of that when we get to the studio. And then these are independent cameras. So say camera two is just having a really hard time paying attention. I can talk to them directly, be like, hey, camera two, what's going on? Like, are you doing okay? And nobody else can hear me communicate to them. So that's just something to help protect people. Because sometimes people have a hard day. People didn't sleep well, right? Maybe they just had a baby. And instead of yelling at people being like, hey, why aren't you doing your job? You know, just a simple, what's the scripture? A, a kind word turns away wrath. But uh, right here, what we just started doing is we started doing a uh, live Spanish translation. The way that works is because we're using NDI and Dante for everything, we're connecting the software. This is by a company called Interactio. So it's interaction, but drop the N at the end. And uh, the broadcasting software, and I'm using Dante audio. So I'm taking my program mix from my console, which again is Dante, and I'm plugging it in, into here. I'm taking my NDI video, which is network video, and I'm using the webcam application of NDI tools, and I'm taking my program mix and I'm treating it like it's like it's a web camera, just like it would be this this logic camera. And then I'm taking taking that and I'm sending it to my guy in Guatemala or Ecuador. He translates it real time, and then with an app, people can sit in service, or maybe they're watching from somewhere else in the world. All they got to do is put in their code. They can literally listen real time with maybe a two second delay. They're listening to live Spanish translation just like that instantaneously. And so we've had a big influx of Hispanic families coming to our church. And so we wanted to help facilitate them by giving them the experienced church service, but in their language. And so we're able to do that. And then with, uh, again, IP, love it. I'm able to mix the console right here. So I have an actual uh, matrix mix that I'm mixing. And with Dante, I'm taking a signal and I'm sending it into my console. I'm mixing it right here under translate. This is his mic. And then I'm using NDI monitor. Now this is great because we're using NDI video. This is video that's on the network. I can take the dedicated switcher mix, which is for us mix seven, and I'm able to listen to it and I can mix it real time. So it's almost like I have a third sound console that's mixing its own output. So it's helped a lot because previously we had the sound guy doing it and just too many things were falling through the cracks. But I'm able to mix this real time. It's being recorded real time. So then we're able to publish it just, you know, as soon as we're done with service. This, this station is doing double duty. Of course, I'm using, you know, I'm watching the live stream, watching Resi, all that stuff. And then I've got my multi-view up here to see everybody, what everybody's doing. But yeah, this is where I live on a Sunday and, and talk to people and, you know, pilot the ship a little bit. But again, it takes great people, great teams to make make every Sunday happen. So it's not just me, it's everybody that's a part of this, this church. It takes a great leader. Yes, it does. Hey, remember this, when you become a leader, you lose the right to think about yourself.
All right, guys, so we're here in the studio, uh, and as you can see, we have lots of different things going on. We got everything from our studio TV wall to uh, lighting to freshly patched drywall because we're expanding and needing to pull cables places. Um, but anyway, this is our studio. We built this beginning of 2023, and this room actually used to be a 50 foot by 25 foot room. We walled it. This became the studio side, and on the other side is the control room side. But what we did in here is we we said, okay, if this is gonna be our studio, we need to make sure it's acoustically dead. So we have as much two inch panels as we can. And these ones were ones that we made, but we plastered the wall with as much as we can, the ceiling, just so that way we don't have noise coming through. Um, so we did that. Uh, you can see our lighting wise, we, these are uh, Fresnels and we got these from China. These are daylight balanced. I also have some uh, LED um, RGB, lime, amber, you know, all the different colors of the spectrum ones as well. And so uh, we just use this to light our set and we use blue light uh, X1. It's a, it's an older software, but it works really well. It's, it's kind of like a Honda. It just works or a Toyota. I'm a Subaru guy, so it's like a Subaru, but uh, we, we use this just run at DMX. And so uh, we went to Home Depot. We figured out how much weight we were going to do and we just lagged it to the ceiling and all our lights are safety cabled. I'm a big fan of safety and making sure you guys rig correctly because nothing's worse than somebody getting injured because of poor uh, design. So camera side we use uh, because we're using NDI. So these are NDI PTZ cameras and we went with PTZ cameras because of it being a studio and during the week we can set them in a location and frame them up in the control room. We don't have to worry about coming in and oh shoot I need a little more headroom coming in and tweaking it. So we use these for our close-up shots and we just have color electrical tape to identify the cables. But if you look on the back here, these are uh, just an SDI, and this is for our, our shading station so we can monitor color and framing, but NDI into the switcher. So this is providing PoE and video, and if I wanted to, audio as well, and control. But I'm able to do that, and then I've got three of those. This is just on a slider. This is just a, like a newer Amazon slider. And then we like Liebeck for, Cartoni for big stuff, and then for small studio stuff, Liebeck. Um, they make really good cost-effective tripods. Everything's on casters, except this one. We wanted this one to be stable. But uh, we have three, three of these PTZs, and this is also motorized too, so it adds that just a little bit of sweeping, sweeping goodness. Um, these are our older JVC 250 cameras that we had, and with a SWIT monitor. These used to be our original studio cameras up here, but it's cool because it's in the same family. I'm able to just get a USB adapter, and I can control zoom, iris, color, white balance, all that stuff. So just like in a traditional broadcast chain, uh, I'm able to calibrate the camera, control all the camera settings that way. These are the only cameras that are SDI though. The rest are running off NDI into the switcher. Confidence monitor, uh, this is really helpful because people can see what's going on. They can see when they're live, how much time they have on the timer, things like that. This is one of the most important things for people that are doing more than two services. Feed your people, <laughs> snacks and drinks. So we have Celsius, Red Bull, Trail Mix, Fit Crunch Bars, Apricots, all kinds of stuff to help people because we do three services and we wanna make sure that they're taken care of. And it's especially harder with families that have young kids. So if we can help them, we'll, we'll do that best we can. And then this is our very first video camera that we bought. And I have to be careful because it's literally the oils like falling off of it. Canon XL1, mini DV. So this is just a prop we use in here now. So I just keep that in here for memory's sake. But I wanna go over to our audio side. So, uh, or more of the studio side. So these are just five um, Sony 85 inch TVs that we set on their side. That was a fun project. But what we're doing is, if you come over here, we use NDI, again, NDI to HDMI converters. These are made well. I really uh, recommend Magewell. They make a great converter. They're more on the pricey side, but they work. I haven't had a problem with one yet. So we have two of those. One feeds this side TV directly because it's it's a, it's its own TV. And then the other one comes over here and it runs into this Matrox quad head to go right here. And so what this is doing is it's now taking the HDMI and it's splitting it up on four TVs. And you're able to configure the layout of your screen. So if you wanted to do a two by two or a one by four or four by one or whatever. Bit of a challenge to get it to work, but we eventually got it to work. But that's how we're getting this beautiful ultra wide image. And fun fact, we actually use AI for a lot of our graphic uh, generation. So if you look at this and go, hey, that's Tacoma. No, it's not. 
Tacoma's never had a cruise ship coming. That's for the video side. Audio side, uh, we have our Allen & Heath stage box right there, and you can see it's power, surge protected. We don't have a lot of inputs, but that's okay. We're using two Lewitt microphones. These are the 440 Piers, and these are amazing condenser microphones. Love them, love them so much. I have to do maybe 20% extra work to get it where I want it to sit. So Lewitt 440s, we have some Sennheiser lapels. Uh, of course we have, you know, uh, Sennheiser microphones as well, but that's that's what we use for our audio. And then we have different sets. So we have, uh, we'll do like a two set. We have a couch as well. We'll do a bistro. Uh, that table right back there with that chair, uh, Pastor Dennis, he does his podcast with that. So it's more of a news type of set. And so we'll just strap a mic to that and, and make, make it look pretty. But the biggest thing that comes with having a studio is in-ear monitoring. We use these, these are the Behringer. What we're doing is we have a mix on our console, broadcast console, and that mix is taking their microphones going into it as well as the SA line. So anybody that has intercom that has the SA channel assigned, they can communicate with talent. And so uh, like we even have wireless belt packs for intercom. And if I'm downstairs and I need to tell our, our online host, Josh, hey, wrap it up, I can tell him that and he will hear it uh, real time. So this is really important for cues, for timing, for things like that. And then in-ear monitors, Amazon, just whatever cheap for hosts, okay? Because it's not like music, so they just need to be able to hear and not be distracted. And then when it comes to hosting, uh, we're developing a team right now for that. That's something that it takes patience with working with hosts because they're unfamiliar with camera. But uh, if you can come in, you can get everything set as much as possible, like it's real, like on a Sunday, and you can work with them and rehearse with them and they can hear themselves. It boosts the confidence and it boosts the quality and you're able to get them on board a lot quicker. All right, so we are here in our control room. This is our new video control room we built. Uh, you can tell there's a lot of things going on here. So I'm gonna start with the walls because that's obviously the most important thing. Over here, we have our GIK acoustic panels. These are called scatter plates. And so all it does is help energize the room. The main goal was to just kill the echo in here because we have a lot of surfaces. And then these are just Elgato uh, lights. And we just added these. This is actually Pastor Dennis's idea. He built a home theater, Dolby Atmos, and he put them in there and he's like, we're gonna put them in here. And I was like, okay, sounds good. If you look at one of the probably biggest things, but probably not notice things is the paint color. The paint color, it's actually like a theater gray. So it helps control light and it doesn't uh, distract. It's not like black where you feel like you're in a cave, but it's also not like eggshell white where it's like, there's so much going on. So the color of the room actually helps with that as well. This is a full blown, uh, I'd say 80% NDI and Dante system. So what that means is we're using our network system to transmit video and audio instead of using the traditional SDI approach. So I'll give you an example. With SDI, you're limited to IO, right? We were looking at a Blackmagic Constellation, the 4ME, so 40 input, 20 output, and then we had a 40 by 40 router. And so the challenge that we had is, okay, we move into this room, we put that those pieces of equipment in, I'm already 90% filled. So I've got 10% left for expansion. And to me, I was like, that's not financially responsible to spend all this money to have an extra 10% headroom. And so um, what I did is I called my mentor up uh, with another system integration company. And I had a background working with TriCaster uh, by New Tech. Now it's Viz RT. And I really liked it because you were using the network to transmit video and audio. You were able to utilize computers in ways that you really had never thought of before. And then of course with Dante Audio, it's really clean, it's lossless. And so we ended up going with the TriCaster TC2 with the two stripe panel and we're doing Dante Audio in. And what that does is that gives us really clean audio in, but as well, we have with TriCaster, you're able to do multiple DDRs, so video playback. I'm able to take the video playback and the, the audio out and I can send that out via Dante into my mixer. So I don't have to go over to my stage box here and chew up all my IO. It's all Dante, one network cable. Another great example of, of NDI and Dante. If you wanna come over here, I'll show you the IO on this Mac. This is our, our Lyrics Mac right here. We've got USB for our keyboard and mouse, power, display for our screen. This network cable carries our LED signal, our Lyric signal, our LED and Lyric signal combined, our confidence monitor and Dante audio all on one network cable. And I don't have to buy expensive PCIe cards, I don't have to buy computers that have PCIe, I don't have to build a PC, 
I don't have to buy a black magic converter uh, to get alpha keying. Yeah, on, I can put alpha keying on all those outputs if I want to. It makes it to where I'm no longer bound by the traditional input output limitation of SDI, but I'm able to use the network unicast, meaning it goes on the network, it lives there for distribution. Another really good example of using NDI or network video is our kids class, our main kids class. We call it KEC4, Kids Experience Church. The challenge that we had is they needed to have program video for the worship part of the service so the kids could worship. Well, well, the challenge that we found is that, okay, now I got to run an SDI cable. I got to buy a bunch of SDI. I got to do all these things. But with NDI, with ProPresenter, you go to video input, you select NDI for your video. I'm a bag on ProPresenter here. I know no one's ever done that before, but they do have a problem with NDI audio that we've experienced. So we use Dante audio and Dante audio seems to be a little bit more stable, a lot more stable, I should say. But we're using NDI video, NDI audio on the same network cable that was already there and they're able to have live video input. Anywhere in the building, I need to drop a video stream. I just get a decoder or I can take a computer and launch and install NDI tools and launch NDI monitor. And I can watch that video, the program video, camera feed. I can control the PTZ camera if I wanted via NDI. I showed you earlier, it, it was pretty cool. But with NDI, with a network system, instead of being limited to running cables everywhere, you use your existing network system. Now granted, you do need to have a network system that will help you out there, but a good network system. We upgraded all of our stuff to Unify before we did that. But what I'll do is I'll go over the TriCaster because I know not a lot of people are familiar with TriCaster and kind of what that's like. So again, we got our checklist here. This is a two stripe panel. So I've got uh, two cross points or I can pull up two mix effects at any point. If I go delegate stripe, I can pull up any of my eight mix effects that I have. So the way TriCaster works is I have eight mix effects and these eight mix effects are used uh, for many different things. I can assign them to be uh, like a switchable output. ME1 is my iMag projection. ME2 is my um, LED wall. ME3, ME4 and ME5 are what we call pick pips, picture in picture. And what we're doing is if I pull up ME5 on preview here, you can see right there, uh, I've got three different things. That is my phone screen sharing to that. And I can literally talk about what I'm gonna order for Jimmy John's, from Jimmy John's for lunch on a Sunday morning and show it, okay? Now we, we have our church app over here, ECTV, which is in development still. But if I'm talking about a verse, I can pull the verse up and I can screencast that right away. And I have the, the ability to talk about Adam and Eve and read the verse itself. The other cool feature as well, I'm gonna stop the screencast here for a second and I'm gonna to go to camera. I'm using my phone as a camera into my switcher right now. So we're gonna do a little phone inception here. So this Sunday we had water baptisms. And again, this is a new technology, so there's still kinks to work out, but we use my phone as the roaming cam for water baptisms and it makes it super easy. I've used my phone and I'm, I'm gonna jump over here just a little bit, but over here, and you can see we use Skype for connect calling. This is the talk show from Viz RT now, but I've literally set my iPad up right here, flip the camera around like this, and been on the phone as the producer sitting here talking to them with my headset with SA on, and I'm able to communicate to the talent right then and there. These, these are some things that are just, it revolutionizes the way that you can use technology in church. Say you're a church that does a lot of presentations, right? You launch NDI uh, screen capture, and now you can use NDI screen capture with your PowerPoint. And you can be on Wi-Fi. You don't have to run any more cables to it besides maybe power, but it really helps remove a lot of the limitations and the, the bandwidth problems of SDI, having to run everything XLR, things like that. So those are just some of the cool tools that NDI has. Uh, there's a lot more, I won't get into the weeds on that, but going back to TriCaster, if I want, I can record, I think up to eight independent ISO feeds plus eight mixes at the same time. Granted, you need to have a, a server that can capture, you know, have 10 gig speeds. The TriCaster also has four keyers on eight on each ME. They can either be upstream or down, downstream, excuse me. There's also a very in-depth audio mixer and we're going Dante in and I was telling Jake earlier, but with Dante compared to analog, I'm getting about an extra three dB of gain and I'm getting a lot more clean low end. Uh, I can do processing on each one. I, I know Blackmagic does that as well. I can do routing. So if you're a small church that has like one person running the show, they have a smaller version of the TriCaster to where you could literally sit and you could run everything yourself on this. So for example, if I wanna pull up PTZ camera here, I'm gonna to go to camera seven here and I can actually control the PTZ camera here. 
and I don't have to have a separate controller or device to do that. So the TriCaster is a very all-in-one production switcher. It is a computer, so keep that in mind, but it works really, really well. So shading, this is where we do all our camera control, making sure all the irises look good, colors look good, all that stuff, scopes here. And then back here we have um, Pro Presenters. So this is strictly graphics and media. This is uh, Lyrics. So this handles the timer, the confidence monitor, all that stuff. This is our studio TV, that sidewall, just a dedicated feed because of the, the aspect ratio. And then this is just a streaming control, kind of a multi-purpose PC station here. And then over here, which is all the com computer stuff, all of our networking equipment here, like I said, it, you do need to have a, a good network system for your TriCaster system, for, for your AV over IP system. That's the better way of putting it. We have a NAS here for storage, for recording. So that way we have editors at another site, they can access this and pull the files real time and edit. Resi for encoding, which uh, we love Resi. Uh, we use Subsplash for a lot of our stuff, website app, and they have an SRT streaming platform coming out, I just found out about. So we'll be looking into that. Good old Blackmagic router. <laughs> and then Switcher, talk show. Allen and Heath stage box. And again, with AV over IP, we still have analog backup uh, backups. So if my Dante system goes bad, something happens, I've had that in the middle of a production where I had to switch to analog backup, save my bacon. And then these are the camera control units, CCUs. This allows you to have your, your fiber cable connect from here to downstairs. And then on the back, you got your intercom breakout, your audio breakout, SDI, all that stuff. One of the biggest pieces of equipment that I don't think it's highlighted enough is your intercom. Investing in intercom is so important because nothing's worse than having bad communication on a Sunday. And so we invested into RTS intercom. Clearcom makes a good product. Uh, I know uh, Hollyland and EarTech, they make good intercom, but invest in the good intercom because staying connected helps and invest in the right tools. A lot of times churches I've walked into, probably churches you've walked into, they expect their people to build a deck or a house, but they give them a screwdriver and a hammer when they need a power tool and a nail gun. Don't spend frivolously, but reach out to Churchfront, reach out to Jake, get their advice on stuff and just pick their brains, right? Have them help you in your journey because it's not always about what you know, but who you know. So anyway, that's, that's a bit of our production overview. So uh, my account, Daryl Cummins, D-A-R-I-E-L, Cummins, like the engine, C-U-M-M-I-N-S, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. And then the church, it's just Experience Church TV, one word, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and then Pastors Podcast, if you wanna see more studio stuff in action, that's Truth is Freedom. Those are just the platforms we're on, and uh, we, we use this technology, we use those platforms as a way of evangelism. Thank you so much, Daryl and team, for having us here at Experience Church. It was so cool. We, I, I know I personally learned so much by checking out the system that you guys have here. As always, guys, check out the links and resources down below. Subscribe to the Churchfront channel, and we'll see you next time.